It's Monday the 31st of October. Trick or treat? Well, it was certainly a trick for Panthers this weekend. This is the Cat's Whiskers podcast, live. Hello and welcome to the Monday night edition of the Cat's Whiskers podcast. My name is Jono Bullard. With me to discuss not a great weekend for the Panthers, it has to be said, are Paul Baum and Tina Taylor. So we're going to be looking back on both Panthers' defeats to the Edinburgh Capitals on Saturday and the Brayhead clan on Sunday. We also have an interview with Brayhead clan coach Ryan Finnerty, which was conducted earlier this evening. We'll also have the other Elite League results and news, including Tyler Mosienko leaving Steelers and our opinions on that. And also an incident that happened in the Blaze-Steelers game on Saturday, where Blaze netminder Brian Stewart was injured after a collision with Zach Fitzgerald. But before all that, we have to get to it unfortunately on Saturday night the Panthers took on the Edinburgh Capitals at the NIC the Capitals coming away with a 4-2 victory in the first period they took a 3-0 lead before even 10 minutes was up Carol Hromus, Ian Schultz and Jacob Johnson scoring the goals Mason Wilgosh extended the lead to 4-0 in the second period before David Clark got a double at 42-27 and 59-28 on the power play but that was too little too late and the Panthers were defeated however Clark's first goal was his 350th in all elite league competitions in his career now, I was working over the weekend, so I haven't seen much hockey and I haven't really been paying much attention. However, Tina and Paul, you were both there, so I'm just going to leave it to you to describe it in your own words. Who would like to go first? It might be one that uh, was a, he was at fault for, but the rest, I don't think he, he had a chance. Okay. I could go on, but I'll give Tina a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 please. I, I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm, enjoying the, uh, I'm enjoying the analysis, Paul. It's, it's <sighs> right, well, I'll jump in if you like, but, uh, yeah, I, 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 can't, I've, I've not dis- I wouldn't disagree with a single thing you've said so far. I mean... What's going on? Well, I mean, I suppose it's a bigger piece, but what's going on with Lawrence and Schultz? Do we even know what their injuries are? Um, can I just stop you a second? No. Because it, it, it appears that people haven't been able to hear either of you two for, for some reason. Uh, they, I believe they can now. So, Paul, sorry, can you start all over again? <laughs> We're live. I wound myself up to that. <sighs> so they haven't heard any of it? No. From from right. the From the top, off you go. Basically, you said you hadn't seen any ice hockey. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure that we, me and Tina did either. <laughs> but I want to, you know, let's, let's get it out here. In, before anything else, I thought Edinburgh turned up and they played excellently. They dealt with what, what little offence we could muster without any problems for 95% of the game. And they just hit us on the break when they had the chance. You know, a lot of people lay the blame at Micah Wheatman's door but I think for probably three of the four goals he didn't have a chance because his def- well, especially the fourth goal the defence just just wandered back and 
the Edinburgh player. Oh, it's so tempting to call him Morriefield still for me. Um, the Edinburgh player just just wandered past him in alone and left Wheatman with no chance. I mean, you could tell when he got uh, w- w- when they put Passel in that Wheatman wasn't very happy the way he chopped at the inside of the you know the top of the net to with his stick to get his water bottle. After last time I saw somebody a goalie make a sweep, swinging motion like that, it was Trevor Robbins it in Cooper's legs. <laughs> oh, but I mean, you are going back a bit there. Yeah, not quite his legs, but somewhere close. I mean, lost us the game that night, but it was worth it. <laughs> um, it was just, you know, the, so many players. I mean, I don't know what McGrattan were doing. The only thing he seemed interested in was trying to get Ertl to fight at 2 3 nil, And, of course, he really wasn't going to be bothered about that. And, well, some of them, I'm beginning to wonder if they're good enough. Hmm. Tina? Yeah, again. I don't think there's anything that Paul said that I would disagree with. Ed- Edinburgh were brilliant. Um, they cut through our defence like warm butter. It was just hellish to watch. It's a horrible game to go to when you know the, the, the opposing team is going forward and every time they go forward, you think there's a possibility that they're going to score. It was it was awful. I mean, when, we, we were sat sort of halfway through the second period and I, I sort of jokingly said to those around me, I said, if this goes to 4-0, I'm going to the pub. <laughs> so um, I, I didn't. I, I stuck it out. I so you're a liar out. then, basically. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a liar, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but but the but the call of the call of Bunker Zill was much stronger than the than the pull of the of, of the supposed game that we were watching. Um, mm. It's 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 really worrying. I'm I'm just wondering if if us only carrying the five defencemen is starting to tell on us now. Um, I, I think I, I think we're we're struggling. I really do think we're struggling. I mean. Um, Defensively, it's not a good show. I mean, the last three games, uh, the, the the goalies have, have seen twenty three, um, sixteen, and eighteen shots, and we've lost all three of them. Yeah, but, that's not good. Yeah, but but then, can you realistically put the blame on the defence? I mean, I, I've not seen the performances, so I'm just talking from the amount of shots that we're facing. Surely the defence are doing their job if they're limiting the number of shots that the netminders are seeing. The, the limit, the, they are, they're obviously limiting the shots, but it, it's, it's not enough. And, and no, it can't, it can't, you know, you can't lay it squarely on the, on the defence either. Um, but it, we, we're just, we, we're just flailing. I, I think, you know, it typified the night when, you know, Callus decided he was going to try and no choice somebody and and he didn't want to know, and, and he just sort of you know bent over uh, trying to avoid these these punches that were being thrown. Mm. I, I, you know, I, 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 I think that just... was because I think Callis thought he'd been slew footed, um, well, judging by the motions yeah. he was making to the referee as he uh, as he went off. But I, 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 I did, I, I don't, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't see what Callis was doing when he was on his way to the box. I was too busy having my head yeah. in my hands. And, uh, and I've, I've been, I was halfway, halfway between crying and laughing. I wasn't quite sure what I was going for, to be honest. It, 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 was, was... it was like we thought we were still playing a bunch of part-timers for, from Istanbul, mm. to be honest. I, I, it, I, yeah, it, it was I, like we, I did it shout was, that at one point. It, it, <laughs> it, that first period especially, it felt like we just turned up thinking, oh, it's Edinburgh, we can walk this. No. And quite frankly, we couldn't. And that sort of attitude is not good enough. Okay. I know. No. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, it, it's just, it, as I said, you know, just, just to sort of return to a point, it, it felt like we were flailing. Um, the, the, the forwards just didn't have any answer to, you know, get past Fullerton. You know, they, they, it was almost like they'd forgotten how to face a good netminder. I mean, I said it, I said it last week, you know, that the, the, the guy faces anything between 35, 40 shots a night, and, you know, and still brings out wins. So it doesn't matter how many shots you put on him, you, you've, you've got to be ready for it. And we, we weren't, basically. I know some people are probably tuned in to hear what our opinion is of the inflatable. Hang on for us, TCW on Wednesday night, because bl- 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 believe it or not, we have had uh, quite a few questions about that. So, so we will hang on till then, <laughs> and you can, you can hear everybody's opinion in glorious technical. Are there any other questions about how you detach the top half of a bounty castle from the bottom? <laughs> <and still hate> <laughs> 
No. Uh, no, they're not. Somebody, you, you... somebody ring them and ask that one on Wednesday. Please. <laughs> uh, we've, we've mentioned how good the Caps were. I suppose a positive to take from the game is that David Clark, as I mentioned at the start, scored his 350th goal in all elite competitions. He's the first player to do so. One constant of everything, Panthers, whether we're good, bad or indifferent, is that David Clark will always score goals. Yeah, I mean, you know, that that's, um, you know, you, I've seen it, you know, levelled at him before, you know, he's a one-trick pony, but um, as tricks go, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the better ones. You know, he, he's a natural goal scorer. He, um, you know, he the, num- the number of important goals he's got for us, it's just a, a shame that, you know, a milestone came in such a, well, fiasco as that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, OK, well, we'll leave the Caps game there and move on to Sunday night and then we'll have a bit more discussion about the the two defeats. But uh, clan, the Panthers travelling to the Brayhead clan on Sunday, uh, clan winning 5-2. <clears throat> Panthers out of the blocks quickly though after 44 seconds when Jeff Dimon gave Panthers the lead. However, Cody Carlson, Alex Levitt and Matt Keith made it 3-1 to the clan before the end of the first period. In the second, Corey Kowick uh, increased the lead to 4-1 before Brad Moran reduced the arrears to 4-2. Matt Becker sealing the win for the clan with an empty net goal with 1 minute and 18 seconds remaining. Um, guys... Is it a Continental Cup hangover, Paul? Um, I don't know, but maybe you mean only. Right, I mean, you're looking to me now. Oh. At least I have the decency to finish my dinner before I came on. Dead professional me. You never see Des Lyon doing that. Um, I don't know. It, 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 I mean, it, sh- it shouldn't be, but it almost felt in a way. Again, that first period, as though on, on Saturday, as though it was, as though we were still there, still playing. Um, you know, opposition of that that quality, and we thought that's all we needed. But I mean, I don't necessarily buy this. I mean, you can, you know, what what, what a trip to Shaka if you're flying is probably no worse than a bus trip to Edinburgh hmm. or Fife or whatever. So. <sighs> I don't think that's an excuse. Mm. Okay. Um, Tina, there's been a lot of negative reaction on social media about both games. That's just me. <laughs> well, no, it's certainly not just you. But I've seen both extremes. I've seen people complaining, saying everybody should be sacked, everybody change. And then I've seen the other extreme, which is, you know, how dare you complain, blah, 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 blah. Um, get behind the team, support the team. Now, everybody has an opinion of how the Panthers are doing, but there's been a negative reaction after two def- defeats. Is it fair, or is there a bigger picture to look at, considering we had just one overtime loss in our previous 10 competitive ca- games, albeit three of those games did include the games in Jacka, where we were probably playing uh, not the best quality of opposition? Um... I think part of the problem is that the the manner in which the defeats have come. You know, we've had a concentrated period um, of, you know, of of losses in our you know in our own league, and it's it's losses where you know I think a lot of us have felt we we could have easily done more, not necessarily won the game, but but we could have competed more. It just it just seems like it. I think I think certainly you know from, from I mean I haven't seen anything to do with with the Brayard game other than the uh, than the fight, um, but I, I, certainly from the Edinburgh game it just it just felt like I don't know it it, it just felt disjointed it just didn't feel mm. like the team had any ideas it, it just. It was a it was a horrible watch. I mean, I've there's, there's always an example I return to. There was a, a game against the Blaze, where for whatever reason Dan Green started the game, and we lost seven six, but the, but the entire arena was on its feet at the end of the game because of the sheer effort that the team had put in. I've never seen that reaction to a loss before or since, and that's the kind of effort that I want to see. You know, I, I don't want to come out of a game thinking, 
well, that was rubbish because the 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 team didn't didn't it didn't work. You know, the 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 work rate wasn't there, the ideas weren't there. Um, yeah, it, it, the yeah you know, the team just. I, I don't want to say they don't look, they didn't look like they were trying because they did look like they were trying. They just didn't look like they had an answer for for the capitals. They they. Uh, they, you know, I don't know if it was that that we were out coached. I don't know if we were out thought. You know, just out, you know, out. You know, the the, the tactics were better. I, I I don't know, but I'd what, what I would much rather go on. What what worried me is we, we, we'd have made a great football team. The number of passes we were putting to feet. <laughs> mm. was, you know, was, the number of times, the number of shots that were fanned on, and you know, it's like Tina said, you know. I don't mind who we lose to as long as we've tried. Yeah, as, as long as it's, as long as it's all out there. It's irrelevant. It's two yeah. points. Yeah. As, as long yeah. as the effort's there. You, you don't have to, you've lost to, a better, you know, lost to a better team. And that's fine. Yeah, we did lose to a better team on, on Saturday night. And the effort was there, but there was so much that was missing. It was, mm. you know, it was, like, it was so disjointed. And, you know, the, that's got, you know, the players have got to be accountable for that i mean i mean the the, the other the other part of it is that you, you can afford to lose so few games i mean you know but we, i'm going to bring out all the cliches you know you could teams are going to take points off each other anybody could beat anybody on any, any given night but you know with the resources that we allegedly have behind us we we should be making a better showing of it we we shouldn't be coming out of a game f- feeling like the team haven't made the effort that or you know that or you know the team haven't played to the best of their ability i think that that's that's probably you know where we're in a roundabout way i'm getting to i don't feel that the team played to the best of their ability so you know i i, I applaud you know all these people who can you know who who have you know given themselves a voice on social media and said yeah you know put put it away it's you know next weekend's another weekend support the lads whatever i i can't support them if i don't feel that they've made the effort that deserves my support that night. I, I am I'm willing to draw a line under this weekend as long as next weekend they come out hard, all guns blazing, take no prisoners. I want that sort of attitude because if, if we go, go back to the year when we won the league, we didn't have two losses in a row. And, and if we did have a loss, the, the, the following, the team that we played after that loss, they felt it. So I yeah. want that this coming weekend and, and no, no, nothing less than that is going to be good enough for for, for the for the fan base that is currently calling for heads. That that part of the fan base needs to see the the Nottingham Panthers coming out next weekend, all guns blazing, take no prisoners. We are making a challenge, no matter what. We are going to bust our backsides uh, and make sure that that if we even if we don't come out with a win, we've done everything in our power to make it happen. Paul, it's it's two losses after you know, we've got nine wins in the last ten with an overtime loss. So we've got points in our last ten games. Is it a knee jerk, or do you think it is opening up bigger issues? I think it's a bit of both. Um, it's a bit of a you know, knee jerk reaction. You know, it's it is. Well, it's it's three three games we've lost, or you know, we've got a point against Belfast. It's just the way. It's just the way Saturday night was. It it the whole thing deflated quicker than that blooming thing we're not supposed to be talking about tonight. <laughs> um, it it was just so flat, and I can't remember. I can't remember which of the versions of my opening rant I said it in, but you know. McGratton didn't look interested in the game. He only looked interested in winding somebody up who wasn't interested. There was, and you know, we miss it. I mean, you've got to worry when you when one of the people you're missing is Lawrence. But you know, what's going on there? What's going on with him and Schultz? How mm. long are they going to be out? 
where are the replacements? You know, they're already long-term injuries. Well, for, we had are you a, trying to get any replacements. We had some feedback from Dave Bull uh, on Twitter earlier. Uh, he says it would be nice to know the extent of the injuries to Lawrence and Schultz because without these, it's not good. And uh, that's just alluding mm. to exactly what you said. Now, one of the things that the Panthers do is they don't talk about injuries or what injuries are, and I agree with that totally because you don't want to be putting out there what what injuries it is but we've not heard time scales i suppose i mean we heard Schultz last week was ahead of schedule in his recovery but we've heard absolutely nothing on Lawrence when he's likely to be back or where when he could be back mm. now we know Callis was brought in as i believe as a replacement for Schultz but we don't know how long Lawrence is going to be out and it, it, should we be looking for cover I, I, I don't think that's the problem. I, I think the, I think our bigger problem is the fact that we never replaced Sam Oakford. I mean, I know you can't replace Sam Oakford, no, not like for like, because you know if, all, all the all the good British defencemen that that might be available are cemented in their own teams now. So that you, you can't make that replacement. But we're playing with five defencemen. I mean, that's that's hard work. I mean, I know McMillan keeps sort of guesting in, but that's that's not his role, and I don't think he's horrendously comfortable with it to be perfectly mm, honest not, not, not looking at the way he's playing it no he's not. no he's not and, and that's that's not good enough um it's fine if, if we have to have five you know, if we have to have you know another import defenseman then so be it but i think that's that might be I think that might be more of a, a more of a pressing concern than replacing you know lawrence stroke Schultz. i i think I'd, yeah, I, I, defensively, I think we look fragile. OK, well, we're going to take a break for a second and listen to a clan point of view. Earlier today, I spoke to clan coach Ryan Finnerty, who was brutally honest about clan's start to the season and how much the win last night meant to them. Delighted to welcome to tonight's podcast the coach of the Brayhead clan and a very happy man today, Ryan Finnerty. How are you doing? Very well, Finna. I am sure you are very happy after the great result for your team last night. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a lot happier than, uh, than than we've been in the past here over the few uh, last few weeks. Uh, guys, uh, guys played well last night. Mm. I mean, you, you've not had the greatest of starts. I think that's fair to say. You, you've got eight points from twelve games in the Elite League. Obviously, that is not the start that you wanted. No, it's been uh, it's been tough. You know, the uh, you know, the season the way the season started for for everyone here. Um, uh, obviously, not the not what we had planned uh, going into it. But um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a new for for me as a coach. It's it's fairly new to be in this situation and, and trying to work your way through and and get out the the best way you can. Um, you know, and unfortunately, winning is is the only uh, is the only cure. And, and but um, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm I like the group we have here. You know, we we have a good we have a good group with good dressing room. It's it's just a matter of finding that consistency within our game. We we know we're capable of of competing and, and beating any team in the league. Uh, it's just about you know establishing that that attitude and and and, and you know putting it into to the start of the game and not waiting for not waiting for something negative to, to spark us. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, I hope, I hope Sunday, you know, actually we played well in, in Belfast on, on, on Saturday, to be honest, and just anything out of the game, but played well enough to win that night. And I thought the guys really battled last night uh, against a very good Nottingham team. How much personal pressure has it put you under? Yeah, the men's amount. Obviously, I put a ton of pressure on myself. And, and this year, I, you know, this year, you, you, you feel it from from everywhere else, and you know, and it, it's it's difficult. You gotta you gotta manage it and make sure that you're staying level headed and, and not panicking, and make sure you're taking the right steps here. And um, you know, I think when a, when a coach panics, he makes mistakes. And and if a coach is under pressure, I think it shows, and it, it doesn't help your team. So trying to trying to keep it out of the dressing room, trying to you know kind of bottle it inside and, and try to use it as a Something to, to to make me better, um, you know. But it's it's difficult, you know. You 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 want to win as much as every fan that pays their ticket wants to win, if if not more, a lot more. So, it's um it's difficult when you don't get the results. Obviously, you got to take it personally, and, and I do, um, you know. But we're we're working our way through it here, and you know we're we're you know not 
too deep into our season where I, I think it's completely over. I feel like I've been a part of this league long enough mm-hmm. to know that uh, I think I've seen your team do it uh, and win and win a treble. You know, yeah. so I know that the I know that the the league is 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 getting away, but a, a couple you know a good month, a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden that that that. Uh, that doesn't look so bad in the standings when you, when you start climbing here. But, uh, you know, for us, it's just one game at a time and trying to establish that, that the way we want to play consistently. Okay. How, you, you mentioned there about get, getting back in and, and Panthers winning a, a treble a few seasons ago when not having the greatest of starts. So how do you go about getting back into that title race? Because you were regarded as one of the favourites before the season started. Yeah, I mean, over the last two years, there's, you know, it's had a Sheffield, you know, Cardiff, I think not too many teams have had a win rate in, in the league like us, you know. Um, so, of course, we were we were regarded as, as a team uh, every year. Um, you know, for for me, it's just, it, it's, it's about finding consistency and not panicking and not, you know, not, not spilling the outside pressure into the dressing room because I think in today's game, it, it doesn't work. Um, you don't get the best out of guys. I think when guys panic nowadays and guys get that pressure, they, they don't react the way maybe they used to five, ten years ago. You know, and I think, um, I think you know, for us, it, you know, winning, winning does everything. Winning, winning gets rid of all the, all the negative and, and builds confidence. And, and, and so for me, it's, it's about, you know, establishing wins and getting wins and, and getting on a run here. And, um, this week, you know, you're never happy, never happy when you don't lose. But this week, I thought we played good hockey uh, under the circumstances. You know, we were, we were short, you know, three imports. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with with Gary Russell and that, and and and, and honestly, I probably shouldn't even say that because he is, I think, he is import quality. Um, but again, a, a goalie that hasn't played this year, you know, and you don't know how they're going to react. Um, you know, I thought the guys, I thought the guys battled pretty hard, and I thought we worked hard and. You know, I think like everybody, I think the illness is, the flu is going around. So we had some guys battling that. And, you know, Corey Callick was pretty under the weather and, and, and it showed and on Saturday. It was a lot better on Sunday. So, you know, those character things can uh, can go a long way as guys, guys know those guys battling and, and, you know, they become uh, they become a, a better team and better teammates when you see something like that. And I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that that was something that, you know, our, our group picked up this weekend. Mm. You mentioned Gary Russell there. You must be delighted with the way he's uh, adapted over the weekend, you know, coming in cold, as you said, he's not played this season. He did a close defeat in Belfast and then, then a great victory against Nottingham. And it seems to be happening with backups this season because Tom, Thomas Murdy doing so well for Cardiff. And you know, backups seem to be getting a lot, lot better just recently. Yeah, absolutely. I think over the years, I think we're, we're seeing where um, backups are becoming a lot more important. I mean, we're moving into, you know, the league has grown, and and I think we're probably at that stage now where you need two quality goalies, whether it's two imports, whether it's, you know, uh, a solid British netminder that can play ten games a year. I think it's a lot to ask for goalies now to play seventy plus games in continental cups and Champions League and and everything. You know, I there there isn't another league in the world that that requires mm. uh, expects team you know goalies to to eat that much that much time. So. Um, you know, I have that. It, it sure is a luxury, and, and Gary's kind of earned him, earned the net. He's earned himself that. You know, he's earned himself that that position. And I think, obviously, with our goalie, we're not sure how long Zeke's going to be out. Whether he'll uh, he'll be another week or two or three. It's it's one of those injuries where you just don't know. Um, and and Gary's going to, you know, we're going to ride him obviously, and, and and let him go. You know, I think he's he's deserved it. Uh, guys are playing with confidence in front of them, and and it's good. It's good for the for the room to experience that. Mm. Uh, just one other thing I want to talk about before I let you go. You took part in the Scott Matsker game in Cardiff last Tuesday night. How was that? Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun to get back and and see all the you know former teammates. We had a pretty special team that year. And, you know, be able to have everybody in uh, was, was special for for Scotty and and you know to see the way that the the Devils did an unbelievable job organizing it. And, um, you know, even the the fans of Cardiff, I mean, over two thousand showed up to support them and and were energetic in the game, even though they booed me. Um, <laughs> but they uh, 
They were uh, they were great. I mean, without them, it wouldn't you know wouldn't wouldn't have made the night. Um, you know, the jersey auction got it. I think it went for just shy of eighteen, seventeen, eighteen thousand pounds mm-hmm. for those jerseys. You know, which is an incredible uh, yeah. amount just in a in a jersey auction. I mean, it was just the whole the whole thing was first class. You know, Killer and then Neil Francis and everybody involved down there did did an unbelievable job. And I think when I started speaking to Franny, uh, you know, you know, in the, in the summertime about possibly getting involved and helping and doing stuff here, um, you know, I want to say like our, our totals were thinking like thirty grand would be amazing, and I think we're over seventy grand now. Um, and that's just. Yes. For Scott, and it, you know, I mean, it, it is, you know, and I obviously I'm, I like getting involved with, with charities, and I think I'm fortunate to to be in a position to to do so, um, and then that's a lot of the reason why I like getting involved is one day I'm not going to be able to uh, to do this, so I figure I, I might as well push it while I can, um, you know, and we were able to do, you know, in, in Scotland, and you know, a lot of people have never heard of Scott Matska here, and they helped me out quite a bit to to do my drive for Matskin and whatnot. So the whole, you know, it was kind of a, a league wide effort really looking back to, to get it to that stage. And then of course, Adam Calder and, mm-hmm. you know, you want to, you know, calls kind of came on kind of during the Matskin thing and Scotty's thing. And it was able to, to try to get some, push some funds his way as well. But, you know, it's, it's a great event in a horrible situation. I wish we never had to um, do that, you know, uh, but um, pretty special to see, the way the the league and and the fans and, and supporters and, and players and ownerships everybody gets involved when something like this happens. It, it's, I think it would makes our our league pretty special. I'm pretty sure that doesn't happen anywhere else. Yeah. At that you know to that level. Yeah, I mean I know, I know from personal experience how how you like to help out and how you get. Uh, involved in charity and I think it, it's appreciated by everybody who's involved so thank you uh, Ryan I just want to say thank you very much for your time and your honesty as usual and uh, we'll hopefully speak to you again before the end of the season yeah absolutely pleasure being on thanks buddy Many thanks to Rye Infinity there for joining us as part of the podcast, as honest as ever. Some more comments that we got from Twitter earlier today from Andy Thornton. He was one of eight Panthers fans at the match last night. He says we should have scored three in the first eight minutes. Instead, we let Russell recover to have an awesome performance. Could have been a very different outcome and it went downhill from there. Um, I see what he's saying, but at the same time, you've got to put them chances away and if you don't put them chances away it comes back to bite you well Panthers banter jokingly tweeted at the beginning of the game let's hope we're not embarrassed to score on the back up and never a truer word said in jest apparently yeah yeah, but I mean, the thing, as as right as Finner was saying there, um, he trusts him. He, he, while his number one's out injured, he's he's going to let him ride it out and, and he's, fair he's play a good to him. Up. He's yeah. he's, he's, he's it... deserved his chance. The same Thomas Murdy in Cardiff has has been doing brilliantly. They they deserve mm. their chance. Certainly. Mm. Uh, another comment, and this is, comes from Frank Lamy, who is a Brayhead fan. He says, number 13, McGratton, got distracted with Rosehill, distracted with the fans, not a patch on Cam, who he's supposed to replace. Now, with respect, Frank, you're a Brayhead fan. You've seen him once this season. Um, we've seen him, obviously, quite a few times. And, Paul, although you said he didn't look good on Saturday, from what I've seen, McGratton is a far better hockey player than what Cam Jansen is they are different players and I think it's very very difficult to compare them it is I, mean, I, think, I think the comparison is though you know they're, they're the sort of the enforced to roll um, there's um, but you, you know there's a lot the, McGratton's got I think yeah got more to his game although he hasn't got a I don't think he's got a single point in the league yet but I mean one, when I was watching the the coverage from Oh, well, forget how me and Tina said it wrong. From Giacomo, um, um, one of the things that I found sort of quite irritating about what Aaron Murphy was saying that he'd see every time McGratton did something that he, he sounded amazed, and you know McGratton's better than that. Mm. He probably had a bad weekend this weekend, but you know he, he's he's got he's got I think he's got more skills than people expected him to have. Yeah, definitely. I I'd, I'd agree entirely. 
Okay, we will leave Panthers there and uh, move on to the other Elite League results and news. And perhaps a shock news that came out uh, at the end of last week is that Tyler Mosienko has left the Sheffield Steelers, uh, having been with them for uh, two and a bit seasons. He was in his third season in Sheffield. Uh, Tina, that was a shock. Yes, and uh, cue all the bet you didn't see that coming tweets. Um, <laughs> yeah. My Twitter my, 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 my would save the rest of, of them. Show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah uh, it came from absolutely nowhere. Very, very, very surprising sort of departure. I mean, you know, if he's heading off, um, heading off to Europe, then he's obviously got something else lined up. I mean, I've, I, I might have missed something, but I, I haven't heard where it is that, that he's heading to. But, um, you know, if he's if he's leaving, at, at, you know, with, with such abruptness, then you'd expect for him to have something else. And if it's if it's not a better move, then you have to sort of wonder what prompted it. But, uh, you know, that's mm. obviously something that's that's going to be sub- subject to rumour. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not something I would imagine the wider public are going to be uh, privy to. Absolutely. I mean, Paul, Steelers announcing a replacement signing tomorrow. I mean, w- one thing you say about the Steelers is when something like this happens, they act very, very quickly. Exactly. It puts, um, puts a very sharp contrast on, on the way we do things. Yeah. OK, moving on to the results from the weekend in the rest of the Elite League. And... Uh, Blazing Steelers in a double header, a Challenge Cup game at the Sheffield Arena on Saturday ended with Steelers winning 9-5. Uh, Brad Day making the start for the Sheffield Steelers, but Brian Stewart made the start for the Blaze, but was injured 12 minutes into the game after a collision with Zach Fitzgerald. Uh, we've all seen the footage of that. What's your opinions of it? Tina, I'll start with you. Um. Initially, it's it's a hockey play. Uh, you know, he's, he's driving hard to the net, and you know, he's he's a guy that you don't. That a lot of people will struggle to move out of the way when he's you know steaming towards towards the net. What I don't like about it is the extension of his arm towards Brian mm. Stewart's head. Mm. That's the part that is well dodgy for me. Mm. Uh, I think you know in, initially, yes, I, I, I accept he is making a hockey play, and you know the intention doesn't appear to be there to to, to run the netminder as you know as a, a lot are claiming. But yeah, the, the the extension of his of his elbow going towards Brian Stewart's head. That that does not look good at all. Yeah, Paul. Um, to be honest, I I can't really disagree. Um, there is a de- after the you know he, he's taken the shot and it's been said there is a definite movement towards Stewart. Um, I mean, to be honest, it, it, in fairness to Brian Stewart on this occasion, he didn't even have the opportunity to make the most of it. <laughs> um, he ended up in the in the net, and there's enough of him to fill that anyway. So you know he didn't have a chance to flail about. Mm. But you know it was it was quite obvious that that something was happened. If I was a Blaze fan, though, I would be slightly worried about the lack of reaction to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, if if that had happened to Mika Weekman, I would expect all five of the guys to be filling him in. I would expect all five skaters to to be up in his face, and at least and at least one of them, you know, a, a, having a go. I, I, I mean, regardless. Well, yeah, <laughs> if, if he wanted to, you know, he's a, he's, he knows he can, he knows how to stick up for himself on occasion. But yeah, I, I, the the lack of reaction is just baffling. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, even if you're not actually going to fight him, you know, you you, you grab old and, and you have a go. You know, yeah. you, you you at least oh. show some kind of some kind of emotion about that. Well, just very briefly, going back to what we were saying before about Peter Callis and we know whether he thought he'd been slew-footed or not, he reacted to something mm-hmm. that had been done to him. Maybe the lack of reaction from the Blaze players means they didn't think there was anything there. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point. Um, Cardiff Devils with a four-point weekend with a victory over the Manchester Storm in overtime on Saturday and a 5-2 victory over the Belfast Giants at Ice Arena Wales on Sunday. That sees them uh, consolidate their position at the top of the league and stretch their lead over the Panthers to six points. Uh, Tina, the Devils starting to make a charge. 
Yeah, but I, th- I think we expected that, to be honest. I mean, you know, you, 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 oh, they're, a, they're a strong-looking team. Um, they were a strong-looking team last season, but they, they still came away with nothing. So it's, you know, they, they've... They've got to sustain. They're looking good for it, but they've got to sustain it. And you know, as 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 the Brayhead clan <laughs> have, have found out a few times, you know, you you can be there or thereabouts, and still, you know, it, it's, it, it's still not be enough. So uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if they can, you know, shrug last season off and, and actually, you know, make, make a charge for some silverware this year. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't being there or thereabouts be nice? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Steelers making the charge. They beat the uh, Blaze six one at the Sky Dome on Sunday night. They are making a charge. One loss in seven league games. Somebody just stop them, please. You know, we can't is have them. Make, is everybody making a charge? Can you not come up with anything else? Oh, like a decent one of form, or I've, 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 his, I've had, had a busy weekend. I've had a busy weekend. I've <laughs> been filming volleyball. It's, I've seen so much volleyball this weekend. I didn't realise there were a beach in Kettering. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of surprising things about Kettering. Um, four point weekend for the Five Fly. <laughs> four point weekend for the Five Fly sees them move into fourth place, and uh, they're making the charge. Um, <laughs> hey. hey, they're just a point behind the Panthers now, and. We've we mentioned Fife as being a, a very good team this season, and and their league form certainly showing it at the minute. They they got the twelve points, one point behind Nottingham. They, I think, could be a surprise package. They're making a charge, aren't they? They are making yeah. a charge, yeah. But but they they are a good team. They've got some good players. They've got some very good goal scorers. And you know, two games against the Dundee Stars, uh, a three two win in Fife on Saturday, and then a seven four win in Dundee on Sunday. So they are really starting to to put a good run of form together. There you go. <laughs> I just think they're on charge. <laughs> Uh, the Edinburgh Capitals couldn't build on Saturday's excellent victory t- against the Panthers, going down 4-1 at home to the Manchester of the Storm, who themselves had a three-point weekend. Um, just on Edinburgh and Manchester, and I'll, I'll ask you both, do you think that they can sort of move up into the sort of top five places, or do you see them more middle to bottom of the league? I think for Edinburgh, it, it depends... Um, you know, if they get themselves into the scenario that we've seen them get themselves into in previous seasons, it depends if they can retain all their players. Um, you know, they don't have any abrupt departures, you know, key abrupt departures or anything like that. Um, th- I mean, the, the, the store. What, what can we say about the store? I mean, they are a team that's building. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I'm not convinced that either of them are going to be. You know, sort of top three. Uh, this this season, but I think certainly in terms of the way the storm are going, I think they they have potential in in the next few seasons to to be challenging for top spots. But it, uh, yeah, I, I think there's still a bit of a question mark over Edinburgh because they've they've had some some quite turbulent seasons. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised Storm didn't hang on to that uh, young Canadian try list they had last week though. <laughs> I think I think I don't know I think. They're both sort of getting there. Whether there is achievable, I, I don't know yet. I mean, we're talking about what a month and a half of the season. Um, you know, ask us that question in February, and we'll have a better idea. Okay. Uh, quick look at the table: Cardiff at the top with 19 points, Panthers second with 13, Sheffield third, 12, Fife fourth, 12, Belfast fifth, 11, Manchester sixth with 10. Brayhead 7th with 8, Edinburgh 8th with 8, Coventry 9th with 7 and Dundee at the bottom with 4 points. So still obviously a very long way to go. Okay, I think we will leave it there for tonight's show. As I've mentioned, we will be back on Wednesday with Ask TCW. We've had quite a few questions already uh, about inflatable bears, stroke panthers, stroke introductions <laughs> but we have had quite a few other questions as well if you want to send one into us best way is twitter 
at Cats Whiskers TV. Use the hashtag AskTCW and we will uh, do our best to answer as many questions as possible. All that remains for me to say is say thank you very much to Paul Bob. Thank you. I'm off for a lie down. And thank you very much to Tita Taylor. TTFN. Thanks very much to you for listening as well. Uh, tune in Wednesday, 8.45pm live for Ask TCW. Until then, tatty bye. <laughs>